May adlaw sa tanan. I'm John David Maza, graphic editorial and type designer na nakatira dito sa Iloilo. Here today to share about the technical construction of type for design dialogues at home. I'm fairly new to type design. I just started exploring the field late November last year. And I've released two typefaces since, namely Maragsa and Bantayog, as passion projects during this quarantine period. I've actively worked as an editorial designer in our campus paper back in college, which involved a lot of articles, text, and choosing which typefaces would work best. The little things na hindi na no notice pero make a huge difference. Also, aside from the message conveyed through words and paragraphs na mabubuo using the letters in a font, the face of the type also communicates its own message. Kaya it's fascinating how good typography can complement the message while bad typography can give it an entire different meaning. Together with my pubmates at Central Echo, I had the opportunity to attend Sir Aaron Amar's talk about his jeepney-inspired typefaces during the Spectrum Fellowship in April last year. Um, being the layout artist in our school pub, I'm one of those people na na-hype up pag fonts yung pinag-uusapan. Pero hindi ko pa naisip yung gumawa ng sarili kong font at that time. Basically, the talk introduced me to font making in a local context and gave me the idea to place it in my bucket list as a designer. Then seven months later, nag-download ako ng FontForge and started experimenting. I'm still a newbie and still learning along the way. So what I'll be sharing is a mixture of what I did and stuff I should have done or I wish I knew about while developing Maragsa. If you know more tips and tricks, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I'll break down my process into three parts, constructing the glyphs, composing text, and checking the details. So let's get to it, shall we? Part 1 is constructing the glyphs. Every typeface is made up of shapes called glyphs. These glyphs are the visual representation of characters. May they be letters, numbers, uh, punctuation marks, diacritics, mathematical operators, etc. So assuming you have uh, a concept na after watching the previous episode with Aaron Amar, Let's move on sa mga kailangan tandaan when designing your glyphs. Isa sa mga attributes ng isang typeface is ang mga height ng mga titik nito. Merong 5 major horizontal guides na ginagamit sa type design. Unang una is yung baseline. Pinaka-importante kasi it's where most of our letters will sit. Next would be our cap line which marks the height of our capital letters. Next would be our mean line which marks the height of our lowercase x. Next would be the ascent line which marks the ascenders ng mga lowercase letters katulad ng B, D, H, K, at L. And if my ascent line, meron din tayong descent line, which marks the descenders ng lowercase G, J, P, Q, at Y. Then, I also add three extra guides, one above the cap line, another above the mean line, and another below the base line. Uh, these are called overshoot guides. Usually, 1 to 5 percent of the cap height. The three shapes actually have identical heights, uh, though I don't know if you've noticed, pero parang may mali. Parang maliit yung bilog, and parang maiksi yung tatsalok. To overcome this illusion, round and pointy glyphs need to overshoot the guides. The shapes on the right have been adjusted so that it's as if they're the same height and look more correct. Pero isa lang ito sa maraming optical illusions na pwedeng mong ma-encounter in type design. I recommend watching the typography episode ng Abstract Art and Design series on Netflix where Jonathan Heffler really illustrates several other optical illusions in typography. For this demo, I'll be using Adobe Illustrator to build the glyphs kasi it's more familiar among designers. Pero the principles I'm sharing are also applicable in case na you decide to use other professional font creation software. There are sources available online such as the FontSelf template na magagamit mo to jumpstart designing your typeface sa Illustrator. So after we set our guides, we can proceed na to building our glyphs. If you sketch your letters, you can scan and trace it using the pen tool. 
I've learned that it's good to build the glyphs piece by piece so you can easily deconstruct them uh, for the other glyphs. I'll start with the lowercase h. First, I draw the basic shapes, a uh, rectangle for the stem and parang triangle for the serif. Uh, then build from those shapes. Sa first stroke ng H, nakagawa ka na ng letter L. Use Control y to view the outline of your shapes para hindi ka na mag-switch from fill to stroke. For the second stroke ng letter H, duplicate lang and putulin sa gitna, retaining the foot. Then, for the curved part of the letter H, I didn't understand this before, pero dapat pala you should place your anchor points on the extreme areas of the shapes, especially na sa curves. These are called extrema points. To make the curve part of the H, try to locate the extrema points ng curve using the pen tool, making straight lines at first. So, sharp siya muna. Then, pull the handles out of the anchor points using the anchor point tool. Shortcut is shift C. As much as possible, dapat vertical or horizontal yung pagkakahila ng handles. This technique helps para less lang ang points and maprotect ang glyphs from distortion once gamitin na sila sa font. Once nabuo ng H, piece by piece, set aside a copy of, of that somewhere outside the artboard, then pwede nang emerge ang shapes per stroke. Tulad ng pagsusulat kamay ng H, dapat dalawang shapes na lang din ang maiwan. Then, use Ctrl G para i-group yung dalawang naiwang shapes. Part 2 is composing text. One thing with designing typefaces is it needs to look good, um, especially when repeated to form words. There's this quote that Ate Jomolini shared with us during our internship with Plus 63 Design Co. And uh, it goes this way, Type is a beautiful group of letters, not a group of beautiful letters. Making sure that your glyphs will work together and look good together is a key part of the process. So at this point, you can now import the glyphs you've created in Illustrator to your font editing software of choice. There are a lot of font editing software but I've only tried two. Una is yung font, Forge, which is the first that I used for Maragsa kasi it's 100% free. I built all the glyphs in the app where it also supports importing your vector assets from Illustrator if you find Illustrator more comfortable. Nowadays, I moved the font self na extension sa Illustrator. The interface is super easy, especially for beginners, para maka-focus more on the design aspect of type. Even though my bayad siya, worth it naman, especially if you're really interested in type design. Then, sa font editing software mo, you can try typing different words and phrases using your glyphs para na din ma-observe mo ang behavior nila when paired with the others. Be aware lang that type design is a battle with optical illusions. This issue will become noticeable once nilagay na mga glyphs side by side. The principle of spacing and kerning is to make a visually pleasing na iteration sa text. Pagpangit kasi yung pagkakaspace at pagkakakern, magiging obvious yun especially for example sa mga may diagonal strokes like A, V, at W. It's the most time-consuming part of font creation ni Kanga. Font Self has introduced smart metrics automating the tedious part of type design, which is super helpful for starters. Okay, part 3 na tayo. It's checking or double-checking the details. We need to admit that we can't keep everything in check sa unang takbo pa lang. This part is more focused on finding areas of improvement in our typeface. Taking these additional steps will somehow give you the assurance of quality ng font mo. One is refine individual glyphs anchor points. You can try zooming in and zooming out and remove unnecessary and unruly points especially some merged intersections. Select and pull to expose unruly anchor points. Next, you can review the visual weight, the kerning, and the spacing. Try shifting backgrounds, white to black, to black to white, 
kasi it also has an effect sa mata. Some even rotate individual glyphs para makita and mabalance yung composition. You can annotate or comment on paragraphs, either digitally or printed. Uh, depends on you. Another step is get a friend's help. Finding inconsistencies in your own work can be challenging, mainly because you've gotten used to looking at it na along the process. It's valuable to have someone else beta test or annotate your work. Uh, so special thanks to everyone na nakapag beta test ng fonts ko before their release. Once na export mo ng font file mo, you can validate it using these helpful tools. One is fontdrop.info, which aggregates a lot of information about your font, like the number of glyphs, the ligatures and alternates, na features niya, and the detected niya na language support. Another is alphabet types character set checker. Very useful, especially if maramirami din yung characters ng font mo. It checks the encoding and the language support of your font file. I had times that some of my glyphs either nakalimutan kong isama or improperly encoded siya sa characters, which I was able to screen naman using these helpful tools. There you have it. Maragsa is my first typeface that I published on Behance back in May this year. I uh, gave the name while I was working on the accented characters because it somehow reminded me of the lessons of Filipino tungkol sa paggamit ng mga tuldik upang may tamang pagbigkas ng mga salita. The same way with how uh, words na maragsa are pronounced, the typeface has hastily flowing forms that are abruptly cut sharp at the end of the strokes. Maragsa is downloadable through gum.co slash maragsa and is free for personal and commercial use. Madamogid nga salamat. Hope you enjoyed learning about the technical construction of type. Stay tuned for the next episode, Presentation of Type with Ali Kunanan. Saliwat, I'm John David Maza here in Iloilo and this is Design Dialogues at Home.